I'm here, like I said, children of the same father. We're here together to encourage one another. I'm reading from the book of Isaiah chapter 38. I'll read verses 1 to 5. Isaiah 38, 1 to 5. I'm waiting for the time to change. And I'm waiting seriously, and I mean it. Isaiah 38, verses 1 to 5. Very quickly, because we need to read. Please follow me as I read. In those days was Ezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order. Set thine house in order. Set thine house in order. For thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face towards the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. And I have done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiah wept sore. Go on. We're going to verse 5. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm throwing up some serious questions here this morning. Very serious questions, and I'm giving you as examination. Get home, husband and wife, sit down and look at what I want to bring to you this morning. Take the following. Listen to the following. Why should God have to raise a man to go and tell a man that he's going to die? People die every day, don't they? How many people come to tell them that they are coming to die? Why should God raise Gio, go to the camp and say, Adeboye, stand up. Go and tell so and so and so that he's dying. Why? Question number one. Number two. Why did he have to give that person the notice? Isn't that not undue advantage? If you know you are going to die, do you know what you're going to do? He even said it there. Put thine house in order. If God will give everybody that advantage, isn't that beautiful? But does he give everybody that advantage? Why is he giving Ezekiah? Number two. Number three. Have you noticed that the moment Isaiah came in and spoke to Hezekiah, the Bible says, Hezekiah turned to the wall. He did not even call Isaiah and say, please help me to beg God. The guy just said, you, you hear God. I also hear God. So go. I will talk to him in case you didn't hear him well. Let's look at another. Get these things and go and think about them. What effrontery does Ezekiah carry that made him to go and challenge God and say, who are you to say I will die? How can you say that I will die? How many people have the effrontery to challenge God and say, is it true that you said so? <laughs> the guy is scared God, you know. Another one. How come God responded to him immediately? Does God respond to people like that? No. Instantly and immediately, God responded to him. He must have a particular hold on God. For him to have that kind of effrontery and for God to immediately respond to him. And did you notice that God reached out to Isaiah immediately? The moment Isaiah delivered the message, he left that room and he was at the bus stop. And God called him and said, come, there's one guy that is challenging my integrity there. Go back, go back, go back to him. These are points to ponder about the life of this guy called, this man called Hezekiah. And these are some of the things we want to look at this morning. I remember when Miriam and Aaron stood up against Moses. And the long story short, Miriam became lep leprous. And immediately Moses talked to God. Numbers chapter 12 and verse 14. And God said to him, let it be so. 
God didn't even answer Moses. But immediately God answered this guy. What's about this guy? That's what we want to look at this morning. What's about him? Let's look at his case. Bring out verse 3. Isaiah 38, verse number 3. That's his major case. Number 3, bring, please bring it out. And he says, remember now, O God. Stop there. Excuse me, sir, if you have forgotten. I want to remind you. If you have forgotten that we have an agreement. If you have forgotten that we have a relationship. I'm going to remind you. Remember now, oh Lord, I beseech you how I have walked before you in truth. Remember now the promises you gave to me. You said if I served you in truth, I will live my life in plenty. Job 36 and verse number 11. Isaiah Psalm 91, 14 to 16, you say, because I have set my love upon you. You said I will live well. You said with long life will you satisfy me and show me your salvation. How come this is happening? Bring back that scripture again, number three. Remember now, oh God, if you have forgotten, I'm reminding you. And do you know the Bible said to us in Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 26? Isaiah 43 verse 26. Bring it out. Let everybody see it. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. If you have a case, when I'm dealing with you, if you, have a, if you, are, if you, if you are confident enough, plead your case. That's what he's doing. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou. So that we can, we can settle this issue. I'm, I don't cheat people. But if you can prove your case. And you win me in this case. I will succumb to you. That was what that guy did. Number two. What did he do again? Go to Isaiah chapter 5 and verse number 3. That we read. 38 verse 3. That we read. It says. The first one was, remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee. He said, how I have walked before thee in truth. If you know the meaning of walking in truth, how many people can boast that they walk in truth? How many people that can boast that they are serving God without any ulterior motive? How many people are in church because they need to solve a problem? You know the number of people, you know what pushed you to church in the first instance. Was it the sickness of somebody? Was it your business failure? There was something or the other that pushed most people to church. How many people came to church because they just love God? And John chapter 4 verses 23 to 24 says, But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshippers, true worshippers, shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him, what? In spirit and in truth. He's looking for true worshipers. That what makes me to know that there are fake worshipers. There are counterfeit worshipers. There are people that are worshiping God because of what they will get out of it, not because they love God. And this guy said to God, I have served you with a perfect heart. When we were young and we were growing, I remember one instance I attended. The, there was a one-week crusade in one village where I was serving. And I was always going for that crusade. Crusade start by 5 o'clock. I'll be there at 3, 3.30. Arrange the chairs, clean the place, do everything. On the third day of the crusade, the man that came all the way from Lagos to the village where I was called me and said, come, come, young boy. What is your problem? I want to join my faith with you. I want to pray for you. What are you trusting God for? And I said to him, nothing. Because I wasn't trusting God for anything. I was just going to serve God. The man was amazed. He started to question me. Who are you? What do you want? 
And I told him I don't want anything. That incident came back to me as I was preparing this. And he's saying to us about what's your ulterior motive in coming to church? God knows those that love him. God knows those that are serving him in spirit and in truth. And God knows those that are serving him because of something. Number three. It says, I have served you. I have walked before thee in truth. And the next thing he said is that I have walked before you with a perfect heart. Each one of us have the inner part of us and the outer part of us. Isaiah chapter 66 and verse number 2. Bring it up. Isaiah 66 and verse number 2. I will read it from here before it brings it up. For all those things hath my hand made, and all those things have been said the Lord. But to this man will I look. He says, I have served you with a perfect heart. This man will I look. I will look unto that man that has a poor spirit, and a man that is of a, move it, contrite spirit. The one that, say it with me, Say it with me. Say it with me. A man with a contrite spirit. When I look into the dictionary to look at the meaning of contrite, this is the meaning. It's a feeling or showing sorrow and remorse for a sin or shortcoming. A man that trembled at the word of God. A man that shows remorse. A man who does not want to offend God. But anytime he offends God, he is not happy. He doesn't want to offend God at all. He has what the Bible calls in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, chapter 7 and verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 10. The Bible uses a word that is called godly sorrow. And God says, I dwell. This is the man I'm going to look at. The man with a contrite spirit. Isaiah 57 and verse 15. Let's look more into this word called contrite spirit. Isaiah 57 and verse number 15. The Bible says, God says, I dwell. I'm living in heaven. I dwell in heaven. For thus said the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity. Whose name is holy? He says, I dwell in the high and holy place. And with him also that is of a... Somebody who does not want to offend me. Somebody who cringes when he sins. Somebody whose desire is to please God. Somebody who works with a perfect heart. Somebody who is careful for his garment not, not to be soiled by anything. God says, those are the people that are living with me where I'm living. I live in the heavens. And I'm sitting, those are the people sitting beside me. Not the people that will just commit, commit sin with ignominy. Anyhow, carelessly. Not people that will commit sin in the morning and say, when I get to home in the evening, I will settle it with God. Let me tell you more about this contrite spirit because that's what I wanted. I needed to take away from take away from here. Psalm fifty-one and verse number seventeen. Psalm fifty-one and verse number seventeen. It says, "If I despise anybody, he said, the sacrifices of God. What is a sacrifice? A sacrifice is anything you use to appease a God, to look for the favor of a God. Anything you do to." Make a God to answer you. And you see the juju people, they will carry sacrifices because they are appeasing, they are trying to appease a God. A sacrifice is anything you do to appease the favor of God. He says the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. He says a broken and a contrite spirit. Oh God, it is not possible for you to look away from him. You can't. You can look away from other people, but anybody that has that kind of a spirit who desires God, the greatest thing in all my life is to love you, Lord. The greatest thing in all my life is to please you, Lord. I want to please you, Lord. I want to love I don't care for any other 
other thing. So long as I'm in the good books of God Almighty. That's all I care for. And God says, hey, these are the kind of people that live with me where I'm living. I dwell here. These are the people that dwell on my right and my left. When they talk, I can't despise them. And so Hezekiah reminded God, have you forgotten how I served you in spirit and in truth? How I served you with a perfect heart? Number four. Isaiah 38 and verse number three we are looking at. And we are taking a fourth point from there. And it says, And I have done that which is good in thy sight. I have done that which is good in thy sight. Look at me. Do you know that those people killing people all over, they think they are doing good before God? Do you know that? You don't know. Those people that are killing people in the name of blasphemy and they killed Deborah, left to them, what are they doing? They are doing good before, before God. Hmm. If Saul did not have a feedback, he believed he has done good. First Samuel chapter 15 and verse 20. Bring it out. First Samuel 15 and verse number 20. And when the man of God came to him, I said, ah, I have done the job now. The God, job God just gave to me. I have done well. And Saul said unto Samuel, yes, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. Because he believes he has done that that is good in the sight of God. And I have gone the way which the Lord sent me. Do you know many times some things that we do, we think we are doing the right things and we are doing the wrong thing? Do you know that many times when you even help, help, and pastor keeps shouting to you, love your neighbor, love your neighbor, help them. God is punishing somebody and you are helping that person. Do you know it is not all offerings that are acceptable? And Saul says, ah, yes now, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. I have gone the way which the Lord sent me. I have brought Agor, Agag, and the king of Amalek. And I have utterly, oh my God. Because God said to him, go and utterly destroy. And he says here, I have utterly destroyed. So left to Saul, he has done what is good in the sight of God. The only way he knew he didn't do what was good was because he had a feedback. And the only problem of me and you is because we don't have a feedback. If we have a feedback, you will know that your coming to church on Sunday does not appeal God. If you think by coming here, you are satisfying God. You are only satisfying Pastor Odutola because he's happy to see you. If you carry sin and you walk in sin and you come to church on Sunday and you refuse to change, you come every Sunday, you go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and you refuse to change those things, he is not happy with you. That is not what pleases him. I told you we are brothers. Are we still brothers? Good. We are going to the same heaven and we will get there. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hmm. When I became born again, one of the Bibles I read is no longer available today. They call it the Living Bible Translation. It's not the new Living Bible. That's the one that is here now. For one reason or the other, they took away that version of the Bible. They call it Living Bible. And 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, in that one, don't worry, you won't get it now. The one that says, saw this to show thyself approved unto God, a workman. You know that scripture? In that Living Bible, it says... Work hard so God can say to you, well done. You need to hear God. So, Pastor Agumiade, how do we hear God? God speaks by the Holy Spirit. You need to take assignments from God. You need to get back to God and say, I have delivered the assignment. And God needs to say to you, well done. So, when Hezekiah came back to God and says, I have done that which is good in thy sight. 
I came to you. You told me to go and do this. I did it. I came back to you. And you said, well done. How can you not say to me that I will die? I sacrifice all the social things of life. I satisfy the things other kings are doing, I'm not doing. The things people are, not, are doing, I'm not doing it. I am living my life to please you. I'm trying all my best. And I know I'm pleasing you because you keep saying to me, well done. What right do you now have to say I will die? Chai. Chai. That's a lot for me. Isaiah 38, 3 that we are looking at. Let's look at the last part of it. And the Bible says, and Hezekiah did what? Do you know why he was weeping? Do you know why he wept? He didn't, die. he didn't weep because he was going to die. He wept because he felt disappointed. He wept because he said, God, I think your integrity is at stake at this point. He wept because he's because he felt this was not our agreement. You are going back on agreement. You are disappointing me. Your name is at stake. Because everybody that saw me discipline myself to serve you, and if they see the way you are going to deal with me like this, they will be disappointed. And the Bible says he wept so. What happened immediately after that? God called Isaiah who was at the bus stop and said, what? There's one guy that is challenging my integrity. Come, 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 come. He has proved his case. Come, go and tell him he's not dying again. That's tough for me also. That's very tough for me. As a roundup. The message I bring to you today 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse number 14. 1 Samuel 18 and verse number 14. The Bible says, read with me, one, two, read. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways. And the Lord was with him. Ah, the Holy Spirit is reminding me something. It was originally deliberate, but I now forgot. What's the title of the message? I wanted to give it to you in the middle, but I have passed the middle. The title of the message is The Power of Relationship. The Power. The Power of what? That's what helped Ezekiah. That's why you could face God and harass God. I have not, I've not seen somebody that harassed God. People harass God, but God don't listen. But this one, God listened by force, by fire. It's a power of relationship. That's the title of the message. Power of relationship. Isaiah chapter 38, verses 1 to 5. So I apologize there. Now let's go back, as I, like I said, as I'm rounding up. 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse number 14. Forgive me because you are going to read with me one more time. 1 Samuel 18 and verse number 14. If you take too much of my time, I will deduct it. I hate cheating. I told you now. Okay, let's read together. One, two, read. That's the message I'm leaving with you. Behave yourself wisely. You do that, God will be with you all the time. Behave yourself with sense. Wisely is what God, what does God want? Many of us have turned God into ATM. You have turned God into a magician. The only time you pray and the only reason why you pray is because of what you are going to get from God. Not because you love God. I love you, Lord. You must love him. He says he's looking for true worshippers. People that will love him in spirit and in people that will not love him, people that will not love him because of Naira and Kobo. I want you to love God. Many times I stay hours in the presence of God. I don't ask for something. If I stay in presence of God for one hour, I worship God for 50 minutes. 
just thanking God and worshiping. This morning I was there until I was tired. Just worshiping God. He's, that's what he's looking for. He knows your needs. Pastor Atoebi shared this with us a long time ago. I used to spend such quality times. And he said one day the, his company was going through issues. And after this long time, he chose, he now mentioned it to God. But the moment he mentioned it to God, he himself felt guilty. He withdrew it again and said, God, don't worry. Don't worry about what I said. I'm not asking you not to pray. Pray, but let God know that whether he does it or he does not do it, Kai is still the almighty God. And I will worship you forever. Learn to thank God for failures. When the Bible, when that song says, count your blessings, name them. Come on, count your failures, name them one by one. And worship God. God, <laughs> 19, what, 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 83 or so, we came for power conference in Acme. I was in the organizing committee. I just bought a car three months old. My wife brought the car to the church. I was in the church earlier. And so she came, she parked. I was supposed to go and pick Reverend Uma Upai from the airport. Hey, sweetheart, give me the key to your car because I brought a rickety car, but that other one was a new one. Give me. Where did you park? She told me. I went there, I didn't see the car. I went back again. Where did you say you park? That place. By the time I went back the second time, my spirit said to me, your car has been stolen. I just dropped the, dropped the key with somebody. Somebody, give me your car key. Let's go. Everybody, the place has scattered. The, 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 the car. The, the, the. Me, I've gone. I needed to go and pick the man of God in the airport. And I've gone. Before I came back, the whole place was scattered. What are we going to do? When I was praying to God, I said, God, should I teach you how I pray? God, I'm afraid to tell you. Should I tell you? You opened your eyes and you allowed arm robbers. My car was not number one, it was like number 10 on the road. They passed all these cars and you are not sleeping. And you allowed them to take my car. And there were security men around. Some weeks before then, they caught a, a thief who wanted to steal a car. You did not allow them to, you did not allow them to catch the one that stole my car. Ah, dancer Kirew. Alagbara. I started to roll on the floor. You are the almighty God. You are the Kabio see. You are the Ashe Yohu. Even when he fails, he is God. Those Hebrew children told King Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel chapter 3, verses 17 and 18, we will not be careful in answering you in this matter. The God that we serve is able to save us from this fairy burning furnace. But even if he does not save us, he does not change the fact that he is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. And we will continue to worship him. That is the God you serve. That is what God wants to see. And God came down from his throne and came into the fire with them and said, I want mommy, Lele. Lele, mommy. And God stayed in the fire with them. I need you to know God. I need you to serve God without making God an ATM. So the Bible says, and David behaved himself. How? Wisely in all his ways and the Lord was with him. Let God be with you. First Chronicles 11 and verse 9 is talking about David again. Let God be with you. Second Samuel chapter 5 verse number 10 is talking about David again. He says, and God was with him. So David wept greater, waxed, look at this. David waxed greater, oh he has taken that away. He, does, he doesn't like us. Okay, let's read this one. And David went on and grew, and the Lord God of hosts was with him. Behave yourself wisely so that God will be with you. Put God first in all that you do. Let everything be about God. Be as humble as possible. God resists the proud. James 4 and verse number 6. 
He giveth grace to the humble. Honor God. In every way, in every realm, honor God. You see, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30, the later part of it be. The Bible says, God says, those that honor me, I will honor. But those that dishonor me, they will be like paper. He said, I will lightly esteem them. So when God lightly esteems somebody and the person prays, what will God do? How long party will you know? What noise is that one? But when you honor God, when you fear God, and you cry unto God for anything, He will look at you a second time. Love God. Fear God. When God was about to bless Abraham, God told him, Genesis 17, verses 1 and 2. Genesis 17, verses 1 and 2. He says, walk before me and be thou perfect. Do you know the meaning of that? Walk before me. Come, come, usher. Come. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Look at him. Look at me. This is God. I'm Abraham. And I'm going. And God is following me. And I'm conscious that he's there. So when Yemisi calls me and says, oh boy, I really know now. And David says, "Ah, uh-uh. we didn't see you at uh, at the beer parlor yesterday. At joint, thank you, man. You are the one I'm calling. Can't you see him? God told Abraham, walk before me, as if I'm inspecting you. Watch before me, as if you are conscious of the fact that I'm following you. God said that to Abraham. I'm saying it to you today. Walk before God." And be conscious of his inspection. He's inspecting you. And if he sees that you walk wisely and conduct your life wisely, anytime you raise up prayers, he says, You are the one that will even dwell with him. He says, I dwell in the heavens with those people who tremble at my word, who are afraid. Practice every God's principle of giving. Practice it. God's principles of giving. Have a heart of gratitude. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 18. In everything, in failures, in unanswered prayers, give thanks. Stay away from sin. Watch the friends and the company you keep. You are here this morning, you are not born again. I'm going to tell you a short story. One day I went to the ATM. All of us have ATM cards. And I thought I was at the ATM card, ATM, ATM room. I put in my card the way we normally put in our cards. And he said to him, Welcome, Mr. Shola Agubiade. This was not my first time of going there. But you see, as a child of God, God used things to minister to you. So that day God wanted to teach me something. And God said to him, How did you know your name? Of course, when you go, you put your card. You say, welcome, and mention your name. Isn't that so? And God says, how did you know your name? And I kept quiet. When I'm learning a lesson, I don't jump. And he says to me, he knows your name because one day, you walked into the bank. You collected a form. You filled that form. And your name was written in the book of life. So every time you ask for prayers, every time you lay out a prayer, every time you put your ATM card, it pours out money for you. You are here this morning, you are not born again. Your name needs to be, you need to collect a form now. The form is free. When you collect that form and you submit that form, when you put in your ATM card in the form of you are asking for, asking for anything for God to do, they will ask, who is that? And they say, oh, we know him. Your name must be written in the book of life. If not, you don't have any right to go to the presence of God for anything. Church, bow down your heads with me. Choir, come. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. Sing it with me. 
I lay it all down again. Thank you. To hear you say that I'm your friend. You are my desire. You are my desire. No one else will. with me one more time. to prayer. Go ahead. Turn it to prayer. Turn it to prayer. You are not born again this morning. Come, come, come. Come and fill the form. Come and fill the form. Come or come. He's calling you. Where are you? Where are you? You want to surrender your life to the King of Kings. Wherever you are, just wave to me. Wave to me where you are. I want to surrender my life so I can walk before God. So I can enter the throne of God anytime. God bless you. I can see your hand. I can see you waving. Come and meet me. Come, 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 come. I want to pray with you. Come, 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 bro. Come. I want to be like Ezekiah. I want to be able to enter your throne like.
back is the guy. Come, 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 come. Where are you? Come, come. Let me pray with you. Let me pray with you. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. Come. Come. Lord, draw me close to you, Lord. Draw me close to you, Lord. There are more of you sitting down there. your eyes tight. Close your eyes. You are still sitting down there. Didn't the life of Hezekiah challenge you? A man that entered the praise of God. A man that told Isaiah, get away. Me too, I can reach God. A man that turned a judgment upon his life. That man can get anything from God. There is a God that hears and answers prayers. He is here this morning. He's calling you. You want to start, you want to start a relationship with him. Run forward. You are, we are taking our time. I have just one minute more for you. Run forward. Wherever you are, before we say these prayers now. Run forward and come and surrender your life to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Church, you want to say this powerful prayer. And say it with me with all your strength. That song says, draw me close to you. What are these things distracting me, O oh Lord? Remove them, O oh Lord. Let me love you more. Let me serve you more. Let me want you more. Draw me close to you. You are all that I want. Open your mouth with me and cry, Father, draw me close to you. Go ahead and pray. Keep on, go on, high. Keep on, go on, high, 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 highest, highest. I don't want you to pray like an MD. Pray very well. Ask the Lord Almighty to draw you closer to Him. was preparing a different message and you told me this is the one you want me to say here today. Like a human being can talk. I have delivered your message. But Lord, I'm praying that in the individual closet of every man, you will bring back this message in the name of Jesus. You will teach and explain it better than a man can do in the name of Jesus. And that grace great grace for us to learn a lesson from this and to grow into maturity and righteousness. Release upon us, Father, in the name of Jesus. That demon that picks away words from the heart of man, I stand in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you in the life of everyone hearing me in the name of Jesus. I pray for you, Lord, life will not remain the same. You are going higher. You are going deeper with God. You are going closer in relationship in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.